Hi, welcome to Grace Yoga, yoga class. This class is focused on hips. We're doing a hip opening series. So check out all the videos on opening our hips. Be consistent about it because it makes a difference. This class is gonna be just awesome and wonderful and help us open our hips up, release stress and any stuck emotions in our hips. So stick around. Enjoy the class. I'm so glad that you're here. So I'm so excited about tonight's class. We're gonna do hips, hip opening yoga. So make sure to set your intention. And for this class, it could be just something positive, something for you that you just want to see happen in your own life. Um, I don't know if you're used to working with an intention. Um, an intention in Sanskrit is called sankalpa, S-A-N-K-A-L-P-A. -A and sankalpa is like, um, it's, it's an intention, it's an affirmation. So it's a short positive state, statement said in the present tense. And um, it's something that we work with um, in meditation most of the time, but you can use it in yoga practice. Did I just say yoga practice? I'm gonna say yoga practice. Um, you can use it just in like just regular daily life. Like when you wake up, like this is my intention. And what that helps happen in your life, it helps draw those things to you and come to a nice easy seated pose we're going to work on hips today of course yoga for hips and think of your intention take in a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out through the nose so another deep inhale here fill the belly fill the bottom of the rib, rib cage start to expand and exhale out this time breathe in let the belly fill let the rib cage expand and then do the opposite like let the belly empty and then let the rib cage sink down inhale fill the belly then the rib cage exhale lower the belly or exhale release the belly and then the rib cage well hi miss guinevere how are you it's good to see you I already fed her dinner, but I think she forgot. So keep that breath going for just a few more breaths. And good, we'll release that. And let's turn to our sides here. So turn on your mat, the same direction that Guinevere is, like me and her facing, facing over toward the right. Um, and kind of sink back. We're gonna to start to press onto the back of the hips here. Oh. Hey, little girl, what's wrong? And we're gonna to start to rock from side to side on our hips, kind of pressing. And if you have a foam roller, oh man, I'd feel really good with some foam roll in here. So glad that y'all are here today, tonight. It's exciting. So I think, what we should do is a hip opening series, like continue to work the hips. Um, every week, you know, I, last week I did it on Tuesday, this week we're gonna try to do it on Tuesday as well. Well, of course we are doing it on Tuesday as well. Oh my goodness, my brain, blah. Okay, start to dip the hips even, I mean dip the knees even lower. If that's comfortable, the soles of your feet may come off the floor. Oh my 
my goodness, <laughs> that was amazing. All right, oh my goodness. I'm just pressing on these glute muscles here, and I guess they're kind of tight, because whoo, thank you. All right. All right, we're gonna have a nice tall spine here. We're going to add a little bit of just support here with our abs, and we don't wanna be collapsing too much into the lower back. We're gonna bring our left foot up, cross that over onto the knee. So if this is too hard on your knee, you can stick with the pre previous exercise that we were doing, and we'll get into this exercise later um, at the end whenever we are on our backs and doing reclined pigeon. So do reclined pigeon, don't forget. All right, and here, shift from side to side. Yeah, see how good that feels. So it adds a little bit more. You can have your feet in or out, just do what is right for you. So it may not feel super good to have your leg up super high. Maybe it does. You do you today. So what do y'all think? Uh, we don't have to tell me right now, but I'll be curious to know if you saw the intro today, wasn't that, I mean, if, and if you saw it, what did you think? I was excited to share it with you today. <sighs> oh, man. Yay. Yoga for hips is awesome. All right, then we're going to switch to the other leg. Oh, and even just doing this, this hip flexor here, this hip starts to open. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so we're doing a beginner series. So I'm gonna be doing a beginner series class um, on Mondays on Twitch. So that's not changed, it's the same. It's just, now it's gonna be a series so that we're gonna go into different poses um, each Monday. And my hope is that um, people will come back, take the series, and that way they'll learn you know, all the basics of yoga through the series. And then my intention also here with the hips is to do a hip series because really change happens if you stay with it. it and, if you, and it doesn't have to be super difficult. Just be um, gentle in your yoga practice with your body. And change does come. It does happen. Take a deep breath here. And then on your exhale, come to midline. Uncross the leg. Good. Walk the hands forward. We're gonna come together with the feet in cobbler's pose. Nice tall spine here. And then we're gonna walk the feet out. Oh, and if you were here with me last night, I debuted. I'm gonna be adding a second camera. So if you noticed, I was able to switch. For some reason, my camera's not working. I don't know why. I'll have to figure that out afterward. Um, but this camera is was the first camera that I used here on Twitch and its settings are, it's not a very clear camera. So, um, you know what's so crazy? Okay, so when I decided to do Twitch live stream, which I was really excited about, um, you can walk your hands out if you like here. Nice tall spine, breathing. When I decided to do it, I had already, it was before the pandemic happened. It was before anything like that happened. And I went ahead and purchased what I needed to make this happen, you know, the Twitch live stream. And then the pandemic started and everything uh, just went up in price like crazy. A $60 camera was like $240. Like why? Why? It's so price gouging and it's not right. Nice tall spine here. Exhale, letting that go. <sighs> just, we're just gonna let that go. Recognizing it is what it is. Have no control over that. No control over other people's actions. I just feel like they could have done something to actually help, you know, and not just be, I, to me it's, maybe that's the way they earn a living, but it reminded me of those people that bought all the hand sanitizer and Toilet paper. Let it go. Breathe and then walk the hands back. Okay, cobbler's pose. We're gonna stick with it for just a bit. 
You can either move the feet out. So if you want more in the hips, more in the sacrum, you're gonna walk the feet out just a little bit more. However, if you're like, um, I really wanna break from the hips, I wanna work more my inner thighs, then you bring your feet closer to your body, okay? So keep the nice tall spine, and you can be up on a blanket like I am, it's fine. Exhale, walking the hands out, oh, right here. Right here, everybody. <laughs> it feels so nice. It's, I'm so thankful. Sometimes I'm in these poses and like a stretch like this creates actually a release of emotions where I'm like, it feels, it's like, it's so beautiful. And I'm just so thankful for it. And I, honestly, oh, actually, when you put your hands together like this, when people are like, thank you, or thank you, actually, this is um, a mudra gratitude. You may already know that, but that's what that actually stands for in yoga. It's a mudra. Uh, hand positions are called mudras. So see if you can get the tailbone reaching toward the mat. Spine is elongated, lengthened. We're gonna take a deep breath here using our breath. So imagine an exhale, use that ocean breath. Yes, we sure do, Leslie, 1185. That's, you're absolutely right. So I felt it today. It started actually last night in like last night's practice here on the on my left side of my sacrum. I don't know if that must be where the sciatic nerve kind of goes through, but man, whoa. The emotions held there must be heavy for me. Breathing, breathing. And walk your hands back. If you're ready, you can stay there for a little bit longer if you want to. All right. We're gonna plant the soles of our feet on the mat, kind of hip width distance apart. And we're gonna place our hands back, opening our heart to the sky. Gratitude. You can stay here if you want, or we can begin to press our hands and our feet into the mat, lifting the hips away. So starting to get a little bit of strength in the upper arms here. Nice deep breath. And I wanted to talk about the breath a little bit more. I talked about this in the beginner class last night. And I may reintroduce it on Monday. But imagine that inside the torso is a balloon. And I guess the lungs themselves do have little exhale down. Go ahead and release down. Good. The lungs here have little balloons and little sacs in, in the lungs themselves. And so when they fill up with air, just imagine them as a balloon that has integrity. So imagine we have a balloon inside of our torso and when it's filled up, it's as if it's a balloon, you know, that you know, flappy balloon, I wish I had one here. You know what a balloon looks like. Um, and if, when that fills up with air, it's firm. So in, it, we can actually, we use that as support in our postures. So let's return back here, planting the soles of the feet on the mat about hip width distance apart, knee width distance apart. Deep inhale, hands with fingers pointed toward the body or out, if you like, whatever feels best for you. When you're ready, exhale, press the soles of the feet into the floor, the palms, press the fingers into the mat and the thumbs. Good. Breathing. You're doing so awesome. So glad you're here. So glad we can share this time together, it's awesome. Breathe. Don't let the neck hang back. Let the chin kind of be tucked in. And when you're ready, release the hips down to the floor. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and come down because I said we were gonna do uh, reclined pigeon. So we'll go ahead and come down to the floor. You can have a blanket under your body, under your head if you like. Completely up to you here. So rolling on down, you can grab the backs of the legs. Nice. We're gonna cross that left leg on top of the right knee. And here we wanna keep both hips flexed. 
On your next exhale, did I say both hips? I meant both feet flexed. Reach down for your right thigh, interlace the fingers maybe behind the thigh, and draw the knee in. Draw that right knee in toward the right side of the chest or the right shoulder. And breathe. Oh my goodness. Thank you. It's so amazing. I love yoga. I love yoga. I've been really enjoying Pilates also. All right, let's make some tiny circles with the big toe. So tiny circles. And breathing. We're just moving slowly here, opening the hips. Oh, yeah. Take your attention to your shoulders. Are you like lifting them up off of the floor? See if you can relax them back and down. Perhaps having a blanket under the head might feel nice. Circle that toe the other way. Breathing. And releasing the right foot down to the floor, uncrossing the left knee, drawing the right foot into, right knee into the chest, then crossing that right ankle on top of the left knee. Just check in. Okay, so take a moment here. Before we draw that thigh in, close your eyes. Take in a deep breath. And exhale, just scan the body. Notice where you're holding tension and tightness from that last pose. So I noticed that my shoulders were like this. So just let them melt into the floor. Good. We're gonna keep both feet flexed as we move on. So deep breath. Exhale, draw the left knee in toward the left side of the chest. Oh, yep, this side is so much more tight for me. Yours might feel the same, or this side might be a little bit more open for you. Breathe, take in deep breaths in through the nose. Loosen the jaw. Take your awareness to your shoulders. Let them sink back and down. Relax the torso. Begin to draw small circles with your right big toe in the air. So I started working on that video. Well, what I really did, I when I had, I had my phone last night to use it as a remote, I installed an app on my phone, I used it as a remote, and I pressed something and it wiped out all of my settings on my broadcasting software. <laughs> and so about an hour, 45 minutes before class started last night, I was in a rush to try to get it back in order. I'm gonna circle the other way, slowly. So move slowly, breathe in. So what ended up happening is I was like, well, I, I lost my start streaming soon thing. And when I tried to look for a new one, they all, they all cost something or I couldn't find, you know, ones that were included with the software. So I'm like, well, I guess I can make my own. And then I ended up making a, a trailer and I was inspired by you. And to make that, all right, we're gonna release the left leg down, uncross the right leg, hug both knees into the chest. We're not going to stay down. We're going to come, I mean, we're going to come back to being down on our backs. I just wanted to get, get the reclined pigeon like done. So we're going to roll over to our side, press ourselves up and I'm going to come over to hands and knees. We're gonna inhale, letting the tailbone go from kind of like neutral to gently pointed up. So not too much of a flexation here. I, I'm like, where am I looking? So sorry if I'm not looking at the right spot. I'm used to looking over there. So, all right. And the head's not too like cranked back. It's just your gaze is nice and easy forward. Exhale, round the spine. 
Try not to let the upper body get too round in this one. You wanna to try to get this low back gently rounded. So let the hip and the tailbone kind of be pointed down the chest and the torso between the shoulder blades, not too high, not too low, but just in the middle. So kind of see where your center is here. And breathe. Oh my goodness. Maybe move the shoulders from side to side. Maybe move the hips from side to side. And we're gonna to start to take the hips in a small circle. So find the center here. And then we're gonna circle, small circles. And bigger. Like you're tracing a spiral outward. And as we do, we're getting into the hips. Yes, 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 yes. Excellent work here. You can have a blanket under your knees. Feel free to grab one if you need. And just make bigger and bigger circles. Then on your next time forward, we're gonna make the circles smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller, same direction. As if you're tracing a spiral inward. So my emotes work now, all of them, I'm so happy. So they're subscriber only emotes, um, but I put in the chat up above like where the one of my dog Benjamin, so he's on there now. So that was exciting when I saw that came through, I was like, yeah, it was exciting. And I have three subscribers now, yay. Or we have three subscribers. Yeah, so if you like the channel, be sure to tell your friends about it. I'm glad that you're here because it's a, you know, it's a full yoga class. All right, smaller circles. Now we're gonna to start to circle the other way. Bigger circles and bigger circles as we move our hips in the opposite direction. But yeah, so three subscribers, three supporters of the channel, which is amazing because it, the channel's growing. That's what it means and it means it's benefiting somebody. So that makes me so happy. Goodness. And then bigger circles. And when you're ready, you can begin to make smaller circles. I know I sat too long today at my work. Oh. Remember, if your wrists are getting tired, you can go up on your knuckles. That's just fine. And then come to center. Tuck the toes under. Press the hips up to the sky. We're going to begin to walk the hips from side to side. Whew. Walk the heels down to the mat, shifting the hips from side to side, rather. Mm. Let the head hang heavy. Feel your fingers and thumbs pressing into the mat as well as your entire palm so your weight is not all on your wrists. Good. We're gonna inhale the left leg up to the sky, kind of opening this hip into kind of like a, kind of a splits pose here. Deep inhale here. We're gonna exhale that knee toward the nose. Draw that navel in toward the spine. Inhale the leg back up. Exhale, knee toward the nose. Inhale, the leg back up. Exhale, knee toward the nose. And this time we're gonna take the knee behind the wrist. And we're gonna walk that foot over to the side, to the right, as we meet in with the knee, the back knee down. You can point the back toe. So here we are in pigeon pose. So we did seated pigeon, reclined pigeon, and now we're in just regular pigeon. And I'm warming up, are y'all? I mean, just after, I guess, being up on hands and knees. So don't, don't go too harsh here. You can even grab a bolster and place it here under the hips if you need the extra support. Okay, again. 
getting warm, guys. Getting warm. <sighs> Y'all. <sighs> All right. We're good. Sorry. Bump. Okay. So here. <sighs> so in pigeon, it's easier if you have your heel back toward the body. It becomes more difficult once you get your heel up and your shin is parallel with the front of the mat. So it's whatever you wanna do. Now from here, what you can do is you can bend that back knee. You don't have to do it. You can just give it a try, see what it feels like. Maybe you grab some blocks and support yourself up on blocks here. Maybe you grab the back foot with the right hand. <laughs> this is a lot. That's probably too much for me but you might be open in that way and it might feel really good for you. So I just wanted to show an option. If your foot starts cramping like mine, you can tuck the toe under. I'm just gonna try it one more time here. Yeah. Someday I'll probably be able to have this foot touch my back. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'll, my body will do what it wants to and I'm, I support my body whatever way it wants to go. All right, on your next exhale, we're gonna tuck the back toes under. Actually, let's, if you would like to, you can move down. So maybe this feels really nice and yummy on, on the, I don't even know if that's the right word, but nice and stretchy on your left hip. Good, doing good here. If this is too much on your knee, you're welcome to come out at any point. Those, that back heel is pointed up toward the sky or the toes are tucked. So you don't want your leg just out to the side. You want the heel up. Oh yeah. You can use a block under the head goodness. Did I say that out loud? Sorry. <sighs> Breathe. Lots of emotions in the hips. You're right. Leslie, you're right. Okay. When you're ready, we'll walk the hands back. Have your palms just about underneath the shoulders. Tuck the back toes. Exhale. Coming back to downward facing dog. Oh, yeah. Walk the hips from side to side. Take just a glance up at your palms. Not too long though, just making sure they're even, that your feet are even. I just noticed my feet are not even. It's probably because my hips are, you know, they're uneven on both sides. I've stretched one and not the other. But don't worry, we're gonna get to it. Take a deep breath. On your next exhale, we're gonna inhale, or <laughs> exhale the right leg up to the sky. Uh, and then on your next exhale, release, drawing that knee toward the nose. Doesn't have to touch your inhale up, exhale the knee toward the nose. Inhale up, use your breath. Let it become that full balloon on the inhales. And as you exhale, create that constriction in the back of the throat. Okay, draw the knee in toward the chest and then move that knee behind the right wrist. Place your right ankle behind the left wrist. Good job. We're gonna lower the left knee down. Walk the left knee backward or forward, whatever works best for you here. Oh, I think I really needed this practice today. Oh my goodness. Okay. And that's the thing with yoga. It's like, you can't ever, I was thinking about this today. You can't just do one yoga practice and you're like, I'm good. No, it's a, con it's a constant like joy. I wanna say it's a joy. It's a constant joy to be able to come to the mat and be present, stretch, work with your own body, take care of your body because you know it's healthy. All right, so testing like what I did on the other side, you can, if you like, lift your 
what is this, the, the left leg up. And so I was reaching back with the same arm. So we can try that here if you want. If that doesn't feel good, you're welcome to try with the other arm like I just did. That seemed to be pretty accessible. And I'll set the intention here that one day I'll be able to touch this foot all the way back. Maybe my head and my toe will touch. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Not today. Not today. Did y'all see the video from a long time ago? Not today. <sighs> okay. I'm breathing with the ocean breath. Breathing. On the exhale, squeeze the pelvic floor. If your leg is up or foot is up, go ahead and place it down and then we'll walk the hands out. That's right, little Miss Vase, goals. <laughs> All right. You can walk the hands out if you'd like. Maybe resting your head on a block. and breathe with the ocean breath. It's a good goal. <sighs> Maybe taking a deep inhale in through the nose and ha out, like <sighs> out the mouth. Another deep breath here. And as you exhale, out the breath. All right. On your next exhale, we're going to walk the hands back toward our bodies, placing our palms kind of underneath the shoulders, just as close as you can get, tucking the back toes, walking the hips back toward the middle of the mat, tucking the toes under. All right. Lifting the left knee, extending the right leg, and then meeting back in tabletop here, walking the hips from side to side. All right, so we've done this before. I don't know if you've seen, but we're gonna start to make like figure eights with the bottom. Good. Really getting into the circular motion. as if you're drawing a figure eight on its side with the tailbone. Good. And then just simply, if you like, you can just shift the hips from side to side. On your next exhale, we're gonna walk those feet back just a little bit, come over into high plank. We are gonna add one chaturanga to this practice. Deep inhale, look forward, lower down, oh, slowly. Oh, yeah. And pressing up to cobra or up dog. Maybe coming up on those, the tops of the feet for up dog. Exhale, tuck the toes, sink the hips back up to the sky. Good. Woo! Feels pretty good. All right, and then we're gonna bring our knees down. Good. Walk the knees to the edges of your mat and then big toes barely touching there Did you hear my arm pop and then sink the hips back oh, yeah. walk the hands out breathe soften the jaw Relax the heart down. Maybe walk the hands out even more, just a little bit. Fill the rib cage with air, expand. Exhale out all the way. Melt here. If the arms want to melt back toward the body, go ahead and let them. Soften the jaw. 
And on your next exhale, plant the hands into the mat, pressing up to tabletop, walking the knees in, crossing the legs, sinking the hips back, coming into seated. So you can, if that's not an option for you, you can sink the hips from one side to the other, and then we'll come back to the center of our mats. So now, grab a bolster. We've been loosening up the hips. So if you have a, a bolster, go ahead and grab one. You can use a couch cushion, a blanket. Maybe you don't even need one. You might be able to do the splits, but we're gonna practice splits. All right. Okay. So if you have a bolster, you'll just simply take one leg over. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a couch cushion, a pillow, a couple of pillows. Um, anything that you have, be creative. Or if you don't have anything, you can still um, do this, or you can lie on your back and draw your leg up to your body. So I'm just gonna demonstrate. Or you can lie on your back like so. Uh oh And draw one leg up. So that is a modification if you don't have a bolster. Okay. Okay excited to try these splits. I would like to. So like another goal on this base for me is <laughs> to one day be able to actually do this type of split here. Maybe. <sighs> Some people are just naturally like, like able to do it. Um, is my head kind of being chopped off here? <sighs> that better. Oh my goodness. So, um, Just be as cozy and comfortable as you can. You know, it's not like, oh, my head's being chopped off real bad. Okay. It's all right, we're working. We're working with what we got today. Actually feels really nice. Nice stretch in the hamstring. <sighs> Breathing. Trying to keep the spine straight here. And then when you're ready, we're gonna draw that foot back and we're just gonna switch to the other leg. I think my cat Yoshi has been rubbing up against my bolster because her, her hair is on it, I can see. Not a lot, I mean, for a cat, she, she does pretty good. Besides, I think I've always owned dogs. I've always had dogs, I've always wanted dogs. Um, never, really, I guess, wasn't much of a cat person for the longest time. Um, but there's something about cats. It's, I feel like I'm her employee. <laughs> she doesn't drink water out of a bowl. She demands that we, she drinks it out of the faucet. And you can't, it can't be too much coming out. It has to be a little tiny stream. And she'll let us know when she wants some. Sometimes she wants in the middle of the day. Sometimes it'll be two o'clock in the morning <laughs> and she's demanding that. Hey, that's okay. I'm her employee. <laughs> My leg's starting to shake pretty good here. Breathing. She loves fresh laundry. So this is like doing laundry. I, I look forward to it because she comes running because she wants to lay on a, t a warm towel, which I'm happy to provide for her. I feel like she lives in a spa here at my house. Ah, <sighs> nice job. All right, so we have done all sorts of stretches. So we're gonna keep doing, I have at least one more pose here for hip opening. Um, and it involves a little bit of a twist too. So we're gonna place our left foot like kind of under the body here, hugging it nice and tight toward the right hip. And we're gonna place the right leg around, squeezing, hugging that right leg into the chest. Good. All right, doing good. So notice if your right hip wants to try to come off, see if you can press that down Ooh, yeah, into the floor and see if you're welcome. Coo, quiz, 
Kuki Sarad, 82. You're so welcome. I'm sorry if I messed up your name. Correct me if, if you want to. Let's see. Yes, you're so welcome. This is going to be probably our last, last um, pose of this practice. We're almost done. So you can either hug that, that knee into your chest with your elbow on the outside, or you can place it on the inside and then place your right fingertips behind the body. Do you hear my voice crack? Right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and then we'll take our shoulders out toward the right, just as much as you're comfortable going. Don't force it. Don't, no, like, push it into this twist because we haven't, this is our first twist of the practice, so be gentle so you can, you're welcome to stay here. It might even be better for you to stay nice and tall here. Deep breath. Let the ribs expand, exhale, melt, deflate the balloon. Notice the space that was created by the breath. All right. And when you're ready to come out, we'll send the shoulders to the front and then switch. Placing our left leg on the outside of our right thigh. Just hug that knee in toward the chest for just a moment. Take in a breath and just check in. Check in with the hips. Is, is the left hip wanting to come up? See if you can press that left hip down. Yeah, I start to really feel it in the front of my hip flexor. That's me. You might feel it in a different place. Breath. Taking your left hand behind the body, maybe hooking the right elbow on the outside of the knee. Nice, this is good. I even feel it in this, um, I think it's called a trap. I would call it a trapezoid and I'm like, I don't think it's called a trapezoid. Um, I think it's a trapezius a muscle, the muscles that are on the side of the neck right here. Oh, I gotta tell y'all something while we're here. So in my very first yoga class years ago, um, my friend, she was so sweet. She came to be in my class, support me, you know, go. And um, I'm glad she told me. I'm glad she told me after the class. But we talk about the pelvic floor here and how we squeeze, squeeze the pelvic floor. Well, I, I was calling it the perennial. <laughs> Squeeze your perennial. And so afterwards she told me, um, yeah, that was my favorite part of your class. So I was like, oh shoot. But you know, that's how we learn. I mean, that's how I learn. Like, okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not the perennial. It's the perineum. Oh, and then somebody typed in the perineum on chat here and um, it was blocked. I was like, oh no, because that's not a bad word. That's fine. Breathe, inhale deeply. Not twisting too much. Exhale, sigh it out. Begin to walk the shoulders forward. Or you can hug, hug the knee in toward the body. And inhale and exhale. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. That's a good practice. I'll go ahead and come back. Rolling down. I'm gonna grab a bolster. You can grab one too. Placing it under your knees. For our final pose here. And if your cushion's too big, like this one's pretty big for me, um, you're welcome to grab some blocks and put under the, the heels. It actually feels pretty nice. I can grab, if I can grab them. It's a place here and just kind of lift up. Roll down. Breathe, exhale, roll down. <sighs> Extend the legs out long. Breathe in. You can have your hands on your belly or out to the sides with palms up. If your arms are out, go ahead and tuck your shoulder blades under the body. Oh man. 
just start to scan the body. Let your ankles and heels, feet feel like weights, heavy. Your calves and thighs, as if they were lead, heavy. Take in a deep breath as you bring your awareness to your pelvis and sigh out the breath and let the pelvis melt into the floor. Begin to breathe naturally. I'm gonna do a body scan. I'm gonna say a part of the body. Just bring your awareness to that part without moving anymore. If you can, be still. Just bring your awareness fully to that part, or maybe you imagine or visualize that part of the body lighting up with your favorite color. Take your awareness to your right hand thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky, palm of the hand, back of the hand, right wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, right shoulder, right armpit, right side ribs, right side waist, right hip, right thigh, knee, lower leg, ankle, heel, sole of the foot, top of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left hand thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky, palm of the hand, back of the hand, left wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, left shoulder, armpit, left side ribs, left side waist, left hip, left thigh, knee, lower leg, ankle, heel, sole of the foot, top of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left hand, right hand, both hands feel heavy. Take your attention to your natural breath. Notice the natural rise and fall of the abdomen. And begin to count every exhale from 10 down. 10 exhale. Nine, exhale, and keep counting at your own natural pace. And if you lose track, it's okay. Just start again at 10. Thank you. 
you had set an intention, go ahead and say it silently in your mind with a sense of optimism of its truth and say that three times. And when you're ready, take in a deep, controlled breath. Stretch the feet and the arms. Stretch. Sigh out the breath. Maybe draw the knees into the chest. And there's no rush here. No rush at all. Roll over to one side in your own time. When you're ready, pressing yourself up to seated taking your time. Ooh. Let me see. When you're ready, coming to a nice seated pose, easy seated pose with hands at heart center, the mudra of gratitude. Anjali Mudra, the divine light and the divine grace that is in me is so thankful for the divine light and grace that is absolutely in you, yogis. Namaste.